take that out. Cargo handling, we were doing yesterday. I hope you all were able to finish the questions that are there for SCP and MEP. So we have here notes on cargo handling, a little more explanation. I've taken it down from our uh, aviation exam. We'll read through that and I'll highlight a few things. Mostly large items with an uneven and individual shape and where it is impractical or inappropriate to use containers or pallets. So that is where the bulk cargo is kept. I had told it's right at the back of the cargo compartments. There is forward cargo compartment of cargo hold number one, aft cargo compartment of cargo hold number four, and behind four there is this bulk cargo. Now, underline the next sentence, for a fast and easy handling of rush baggage, comma, late arrival and last minute and crew baggage is usually loaded into the bulk cargo compartment also. So that is where, you know, certain latecomers and if there is some emergency and baggage has to be unloaded, so it is put in the bulk cargo compartment. In some aircraft, bulk cargo compartment is in rear part of the aircraft, as I told you, and it is pressurized and tempered for transport of animals. So, however, it says any way live animals can also be transported in different types of compartment. So, live animals can be carried in cages and all. And uh, my son was explaining one day, he said he was in Muscat, and a chap came and told him that, uh, sir, uh, there was a cat and the cat is missing, cat is gone. So captain, he said, what can I do about it? After about half an hour, they came back and said, sir, we found the cat, God knows which cat it was, but they loaded it and the aircraft took off. So there was another case where he was telling me there was a lady who had put her dog in the cargo compartment. And when they were loading the cargo compartment, they found that the dog was dead. So they changed the dog, put in a live dog and transported when the aircraft landed at the destination. The lady complained, she said, this is not my dog. They said, yes, this is your dog. She said, no, I was carrying a dead dog and I wanted to bring it home. So things like this can happen in the cargo compartment. So they're just sidelined. So we have bulk cargo and then we have containerized freight. We'll just go through the explanation here. Some cargo compartments are designed so that instead of loading freight, that means luggage, or pieces of baggage into compartments individually, underline that individually, they are loaded in containers first, which are then loaded into aircraft cargo compartment. So we saw that there are containers, suitcases and baggages and all, they are loaded in containers. This provides maximum efficiency in using the base space. Such methods also offer better possibilities in terms of securing the cargo and prevents from un underlined unwanted cargo movement during the flight. Since containers are connected, now what is happening to the containers, they are connected directly to the aircraft. So we've seen there are containers in which you load the suitcases, lock up the containers and load them. Another advantage is that each container has its own manifest. That means whatever is loaded inside the container is recorded. So if they want easy access to certain luggage, etc., you can get it. And the third one, we have what is called palletized cargo. Similar to containers, the individual pieces of cargo are not directly loaded onto the cargo compartment but they are firstly loaded into standard size pallets. And we have said this is usually used to have a, a equal distribution of load so that there is no centralized load that takes place. So the pallets are used for that to secure the load and prevent them from falling off the pallet. Even during a severe turbulence, the main advantage is that the weight of the pallet itself is much lower than that of a container. This is just like a bed, so the weight will be less than a container, but they have to be put in a net and secured safely. 
the main advantage is that the weight of the pallet underlying that main advantage yeah and it is to be secured with nets however the pallets can hardly provide such good efficiency in the use of base space as the containers do so since the pallets are open and widely spread they don't provide much of you know space saving as such typically the very front area now this is where the pallets are loaded typically the very front area of the forward compartment is designed to accommodate palletized cargo so these are the three things that i wanted to highlight three areas one is called the bulk cargo what is the definition of bulk cargo last minute arrival rush bags crew baggage etc are stored into the bulk cargo uh, cargo compartment and uh, they are normally at the back and animals can also be put over there however animals can be in other places also then we have the containerized freight and palletized cargo here i would like you all to write down two points note down firstly if the load moves in flight flight not freight flight f l i yeah thanks the moment arm changes balance arm changes comma this will affect the center of gravity also so this is what happens if the uh moment arm changes we know if the moment arm changes then the center of gravity also will change because cg is equal to total moment divided by total mass second point containers and pallets remain on rollers absolutely said they what container and pallet remain 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 yeah remain on rollers r o l l e r s within track within t r a c k yeah s comma if they are secured by latches that means there is a latch over there yeah that's all so these two points we need to know okay now there are a lot of questions mathematical calculations as usual so what i have done is i have taken photographs of some questions which i will send you one by one and each one will get the copy of that so yeah here goes the first question to ashraf please transport it to everybody and let me see how you work this out take a piece of paper and pencil the baggage compartment of a helicopter is 1.3 meter wide and 1.6 meters long and has a maximum floor loading of 700 kg per square meters what is the maximum capacity of baggage compartment limited by maximum floor loading that means how much can you carry yeah so how do you work this out to work this out you have a formula floor loading equals mass upon area floor loading equals mass upon area now you have to find out how much mass you can carry so what do you do how much is your floor loading the loading is 700 kg yeah. per meter square meter yeah so 700 is equal to mass upon 
area. Area is what? Length into breadth. So what will it be? 1.3 into 1.6. So that is a formula. Load loading is equal to mass upon area. Output is the mass. One four five six. One point three into one point six into seven hundred is how much? Uh, one four, four five six. six kg. Yeah. So that is your maximum mass that you can carry. So that is the answer. Very simple. We have to find out the actual flow loading of this in this present condition. Uh, 140 pounds per square foot. Hmm? Is it 140 pounds per square foot? Yeah. No, that is the total mass it can carry. Read the question okay. carefully. Okay. And now work okay. out the answer. Yeah. Okay, two ten five. What is the current? The maximum for floor loading is two hundred, correct? Okay. Pounds per square feet. Today the mass is so much. So what is the two thousand? Yeah, one forty. Yeah. Pounds per square feet. So floor loading is equal to mass upon area. In this case, you got the mass. Okay. How much is your mass? 1400. What is your area? For 2 into 5. Is it clear? Simple? Okay, I'll give you another question. Yeah, put this on. So the answer just now is 140, is it? Yeah, 140. That is the current floor loading. Oh, okay. Okay, so you have to just floor loading is equal to mass upon area. In this case, the maximum li li limit is 200, but I'm carrying only 1400 pounds. So what is the floor loading today? 140 within limits I can take off. 
Okay. Now calculate this. upon area how much mass you got to calculate the flow loading is 3000 newtons per meter square uh, is this 108 kg no how much 108 uh, i mean the yeah, answer we get is 1080 newton so Convert to kg is 108. Uh, 1080, then divide by 10. That is Newton. Yeah, you have to find in kg. So 108 kg. Yes, correct. Okay. So I give you another one. Okay, now read this carefully and tell me how you do it. So isn't it answer is container Charlie? Container Charlie. Yes, correct. I hope everybody is getting it. If anybody is not understood, you must ask me now. Because the questions become a little more tougher and tougher. So, um, yeah. contain, container delta can also uh, uh, handle the load, right? No. What is container delta? Yes. Because it is 633, correct? No. What is delta will be 692. 692. 970 divided by 1.4 is how much? Nine six two. Six nine two. Six nine two, yeah, correct. So it can be only Charlie. Oh, okay. Is everybody following? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, okay, fine. That I'm happy about that. So I give you another one. Let me see how you read and follow this.
Okay, we are sending another one. Uh, maximum mass is 280.8. Which is this one? What is this? So, 270. So, dimension is 60 centimeter. 280.8. One second. I'm just checking my answer. What was the question? Seven eighty. Uh, yeah, about seven hundred eighty kg uh, per square meter. Yeah, that is per square meter. What is the maximum? Yeah. Ah, what is the answer? Two eight zero point eight kg. Yeah. Okay. Two eight one. Yeah. You have to be careful about the, using the same unit. Okay. Here's another one. How will you work this out? So we we uh, seeking for the dimension. Yeah. So is in it it gonna be uh, one point five meter? No. Here you got to understand the mass of one zero point one eight seven metric tons. So you multiply so, this by thousand. 
then you get kg okay okay so how much is 0.187 metric ton equal to how many kg 187 kg yeah 187 kg and what is the maximum float loading 80 80 kg per meter square so what is your formula loading equals mass over area yeah so you have now your flow loading you have your mass you got to find out area so what do you do mass divided by flow loading yeah so how much do you get 2.33 2.37 yeah. 2.3375 meters square that is your area like the that is not given but you got to get your meter square clear yes right. okay so say so we have 2.3375 that's a meter square so do we need to square root that to get no the, no, no, uh, no 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 need. no no need, no need. Oh, okay so 2.3375 is the answer yeah okay Okay, one more. How will you work this out? Charlie said. question you will have to refer to your load table which we studied in cap 696 and work the answer for this and tell me which compartment is it forward compartment mid compartment aft compartment or cargo hold number 1 cargo hold number 4 you got to find that out put up the next uh, question done sir sorry uh, i mean i've done sharing the latest question okay yeah
Yeah. Now think about this very carefully. So, so since is put into the pellet, so we just take the pellet as the dimension. Very correct. So plus twenty five kg, so eight hundred twenty five divided by five square, we have get thirty three kilogram per boy's feet. Feet we convert to meter. So, so we get to the three kg per feet square. Yeah. Okay. And you got to get the running. So this is when you look at your chart. What is our maximum floor loading for the MRGT? Forward compartment, cargo hold, rear cargo hold. What is even the floor loading? 68 kgs per square, correct? Okay. So, this is within limits? Yes, How much sir. is this? 33, okay. Now, running load. How do you calculate running load? How much is the running load in our aircraft given? Running load is 15.75. Running load, right? Yeah. What is the running load given in forward compartment? Look at the oh, chart. Oh, so oh, okay. Thirteen point one five. Different. Yeah. So check the thing and calculate for this. What is your running load? So thirteen point seven five is the running load. Yeah. So where can we fit this? Of cargo for what section? Huh? Of cargo. Front. Front, yes. Front. Yeah. Cargo hold, you know, one, a cargo hold four forward compartment. Can you see that? Both are within limits. One is 14.65, the other is 13.15. And we are getting, no, we cannot put it in cargo hold number front, correct? Okay. Cargo hold number one cannot hold this. Limit is 13.15. How much is our limit? Working out, what is our running load? 13.75. 13.75. So, where can we load this? Uh, aft cargo forward. Yeah, that's how you work out. Aft cargo hold, forward compartment. Okay. Now, there are quite a few questions. I'll help you all out in one more question. Get on to aviation exam, question number 6093. Six, 
Okay. This is slightly complicated. I'll try and explain. Yeah. Now it says over here the structural limitation of a baggage compartment is 32 pounds per square feet. A load has a mass of one 200 kg and has to be distributed over the area of at least these other dimensions. So now we have to think there is the pounds per square feet is given and the answer is in meters square and the mass load is kg. So we have to do firstly Note down, write down on your piece of paper, one meter is equal to 3.28 feet. One meter is equal to 3.28 feet. Therefore, one meter square is equal to 3.28 multiplied by 3.28. How much is that? Ten point seven five. Yeah, 10.76 we can take. 7.5 something, 7.6. So, now underline that 1 meter square is equal to 10.76 square feet. One meter square is equal to, we have converted this now into feet. So now we have to convert 32 pounds square foot into kgs. Now in brackets write down 2.2 kg equals 2.2 uh, pounds equal 1 kg. So 32 pounds will be how many kgs? Fourteen point five four. 14.51. 14.51, yeah. Okay, that is, you know, it's actually 2.205 some something. So we'll take it as 14.51 kg. So now we have converted the pounds into kgs. Okay, now we have to convert that into meters squared. So write down. 1 meter square is equal to 10.76 square feet. That means 14.51 multiplied by 10.76 is equal to how much? 14.51. Multiplied by 10.76. 156. Yeah, so now this is converted to 156.13 uh, kgs per meter square. So our mass is given in 200 divided by 156.3. The uh, one three is equal to how much? 1.28. Yeah, 1.28, 1.3 meters squared. So that is the way you've got to work this out. A little complicated, but what to do? You have to learn to change these things and... Okay. Now, in your aviation exam 031, 
the last section, part five or six, what is it? Zero three one zero six cargo handling, correct? Yes, sir. And there are about thirty. How many questions? Thirty five. How much? Thirty three. Yeah. Now there are a lot of questions there, definitions, terminologies, etc. I have given you a little bit of uh, exposure to the different baggage compartments, etc. So you'll have to go through this and try and answer a few questions. If there are difficulties, we'll see you tomorrow then. Yeah. Oh, if you all have any question, note down the question number and we'll try and solve it tomorrow. So this is regarding cargo handling. So only the questions that we have done sort of practice you can answer. If there are difficulties, we'll see tomorrow then. I'll try and explain as much as I can online. Otherwise, we'll have to wait for classes to start. What is the score now? Tell me, Jen. Jen from Kuala Lumpur. What is Sorry. the year? Are we coming to work on 15th? Oh. Uh, ah. I know, sir, I need to wait for the latest announcement. <laughs> yeah, the health minister said on 10th of April the decision will be taken. Okay. So uh, we'll call it off now for today. And uh, as I said, we'll meet again tomorrow. If there are any questions, otherwise we will move forward with our MRJT then. Okay, sir. Thank you. Okay. Take care, all of you all. Be good and follow all the rules and regulations your country is laying down. Okay. Okay. Right or bye. Take care. Thank you, sir. Thank you. You too, sir. Bye. Have a nice day. Yeah, thank you.